Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Third, so y'all don't get dragged in. I just made sure. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, this is just me. It's all good, because I'm telling you, if the wife hear about 900 million, she'll let me go dangle dick in the mall for a minute and get that money. And we'll, and we'll come bail me the fuck out knowing that I'm good for it. For life. Life, life. <laughs> Shit. I'll be the mall dangler for 900 million. I'll let my wife Mold dangler. I'll let my wife go bounce boobies right in the food court. Nine hundred million, baby, go get that bread. Go get the that bread. Come on, we'll I got you. I'll be working security. I'll be hiding behind a bush just in case somebody try to get frisky. But hey, three minutes. Well, yeah, I got do you like this for you, baby. I'll be with my wife like this. Come on, boo in the food court. Goodness, Brittany. Nine hundred fucking million. We all, hey, everybody, we talk today. Today, Shit. as I bail out, everybody, everybody meets up retired. Hey, y'all, we ain't working no more. I guess this shit is over. Uh, podcast for life, niggas. <laughs> Shit. That's it, it, this is it. We have we have made it, niggas. Whatever you thought you wanted to do, we we about to do that shit now. Today, nigga, nine hundred million. Shit. Good life changing. That's family changing. That's that's re- that's generational changing. Unless you uh, unless you got a grandkid down the line somewhere, this is a fuck up. I mean, if you give me fifteen million today, it's a wrap for everything. Like I would have, I would have so much other shit figured out. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you, like that, like you that. need a million right now. I'm making some good investments, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm laying down for a little bit. Make like some real good investments. <laughs> I'm just feed up every day. All day. You feel me? Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. As much I might do. You know, I've always said it, and I'm gonna keep to it. If I ever win, a, if I ever win the lottery, and I get that big, big, big bread, where I ain't got to work, I'm gonna still work part time somewhere for at least 15 hours a week. Just so I can get that motherfucker health insurance, so I ain't gotta pay that shit out of pocket. Cause health insurance, I straight out of pocket, is expensive as fuck. So if the company won't do it, cool. I want shit else to see me that bull. Give me your health insurance. I will pay everything else on top of it because I can. I come work your door, whatever. Matter of fact, I will sweep the floors for you. I be a motherfucker. You talk shit. Yeah, you clean the floors. Yeah, nigga, you see that helicopter on top of the building? That's my helicopter. I fly that shit to work, motherfucker. <laughs> my driver stays up there for my eight hours here, and I get on the I fly home. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll sweep the floor, nigga. I got the helicopter on the roof, nigga. The fuck? Yeah, because I, I, I really don't want to pay for health insurance by myself. I, I let the government do I, I let the job do that shit. I ain't sweeping. I do that shit. I let them do that shit. I'm going to have some. I, love, oh, I ain't doing a good job. I'm going to do a half ass job. I'm, I'm going to do a piss poor ass job, man. Songs as they sweep up after me. Oom, pa, loom, pa, doom, pa, dee, tis. We will come out and sweep for your kid. We don't care if it's Cheerios, too, or the Fruit Loops that you really like, dude, or the pistachio shells that you spit. We don't even care because you're rich, rich, rich. <laughs> And we like the paychecks, and we like the benefits. Ooh, ba, no. I would be out this bitch. I ain't Ours. motherfucking thing, nigga. Carry me. To- <clears throat> Pick me up. Nigga. If I get real wealthy, like, just on some bullshit, I want a team of midgets. Like, three or four, like, midgets. Just, just like, I, I pay y'all niggas just to be around. Like, just to do shit. <laughs> Man, if I if I get that reason, I'm disappearing. All you're gonna see is the metaverse version of me. <laughs> they the they still say nigga. Shit. I put it like this. I've seen midgets say nigga before, so fuck I can't say midget. Bro. Little people. Well I, I think that sounds more to, I don't know. Um 
Um, to to me, that sure. sounds so demeaning. Can, yeah, to it me, sounds more demeaning to like, call them little people. Like, to me, this is this my thing. This is my thing. I'm an eighties. We all eighties babies. Little people used to be what they call kids, right? Mm-hmm. They used to call kids little people. You feel me? I feel like it's disrespectful to call somebody over just because they're a short stature, a little person, because that's in my mind what I'm conditioned to think about as kids, because they are people, but they ain't regular size people. They're just little people, kids. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But actual people that you want to classify as little people now, they're just they grown up. They just different heights. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like I know regular size people. I know regular adults who ain't little people who are shorter than some little people. Mm. Mm. Oh, true. Yeah, it is. McCord. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a he's not a little person. But that's my nigga now. You know I, mean? I, I, I fuck, I fuck with McCoy, but he's short. That ain't his fault. He ain't make his height. I, I, I damn sure ain't the tallest <laughs> motherfucker. I he didn't make his height. I don't know where he the tallest. He didn't. No, I'm make damn sure he's the tallest motherfucker in the group. But in like this a, conversation, I can't tall. put me in this conversation. Short He's the only person. Or, or, or. Or I got even or, somebody even shorter. Or bleak, bleak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Bleak was shorter than Mac, but neither one of them are classified yeah. as a little person. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't get down. I, some of these classifications and this PC shit that people want everybody to start calling them like. Do you? I don't think they really be look thinking about what the fuck they be want to be called. Like, I I, I want to be called black just because the definition of that shit. Like, but I don't I don't want to be called colored either. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'm gonna stick with black. <laughs> like, don't call me African American because I have other heritages in me as well. So I mean, like, <laughs> so I mean, like, I guess I'll stick with black. Okay. Just like we, just like we had a conversation the other week about the, the, the Democrat shit. Like, where we gonna go? <laughs> I mean, we may not like it, but what the fuck? Same concept. Uh-oh. Shit. What the hell? I don't know, nigga. What you doing? I don't know. I thought that was what you was doing. I was gonna make sure you good. I was concerned. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm good. You're Gucci, Pat. You Gucci. You're Gucci, yeah, my man. I'm good over here. Yeah. Yes. You Gucci and I'm Gucci and we all Gucci. Gucci. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, mm-hmm. have weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I want third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I'm along with... It's the Padawan here. Um, I'm still debating what I would do for $900 million, and I'm along with... What's that, man? It's Space in the Place, Mr. RTreeClothing.com. That's RTreeClothing.com. Right here with the partners, man. We all together as one. Form like Voltron, baby. What's going on this week? Man, everything, man. Life is good this week, man. Life is good. Um... Week of transition. So I'll talk to y'all offline about some things, but yeah, man, the week is going really good. I finally come to the realization of some things that made life a lot less anxious. So yeah, man, we we are we are slowly but surely creeping our way toward Nirvana as we speak. How y'all be this week, man? How's life? I'm good. I can't complain. I can't complain. Okay. Okay. I can't really complain, man. Um, some things got on my nerve earlier this week, but I realized at a certain point, you have to stop caring 
more than other people involved in the situation, regardless who the other people are. Sometimes you just got to protect you more because at the end of the day, you are really all you have. You feel me? So, I mean, old school saying, I was brought in this world by myself, I'm going to leave this world by myself. So, at the end of the day, I got to protect myself. It's a heartless thing to say, but it's the most real thing you could ever realize to yourself. So, I mean, realizing that you feel me, got me through. I can say a, a mental diff, uh, a mentally difficult time this week, but at this point, I'm great. I'm Gucci, 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 Poochie. Um, Had a walk. You're done. Um, just be there for me. I got you, bro. I got you. Call me if you need me. Oh, really? I got the Holla if you hear me. Oh, I got the hookup. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Pat, Pat, Face, you could have said something worse. You could have been like, well, you know, I, I'm going to leave out this world by myself, but I could have, t- I'm going to take a couple of you motherfuckers with me. That, that would have been worse. So, I mean, that, that was kind of more, you know. All right. If I, you know me, I'm going to the left. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I'm tired, y'all. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> you see where Pat about to go tonight? Uh, we, we're starting off with a. Uh... Off, off from the rip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm, I'm tired, y'all. I, I applied to a couple of positions to my uh, job. Like they kind of responded real quick. Like I got, I got an email on my day off, so I didn't see it to the next day that I had a interview that day. So I was like, really not prepared but I was like not expecting them to even respond that quickly um, so yeah I just use that as a educational mo- moment to see how these interviews going to go and start applying for like every little position I could probably sneak my little hind pots in pretty much hind pots hind pots as, as the older Virginians used to say Ah, boy. I know that's a, boy, that ain't nothing but over Jim. Mm-hmm. Right. Have Man, a stick man. Mm-hmm. Either one of them. You know where the motherfucker from, boy. I'm trying to tell you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then uh, I went to the museum. Went to the museum. It was random because that was the basically the Valentine's Day. So went to the museum. Uh, yeah, was it? I wasn't allowed to like tape record footage but i did <laughs> so I'm what type of museum see, was it? um the chrysler museum right now just you know yeah has a few exhibits and stuff like that i was like you know what let's go ahead and the do Mickey it. museum no uh, there wasn't really nobody naked there well i mean it was a couple of statues and shit but you know that's about it. Statues. You know, statues. What are you into, Faith? What's happening over there with you? You all right? <laughs> what? You, you, so, you, so you didn't act like you didn't hear him say it. You didn't hear him say it won't really that many that many people naked. He didn't say it won't none. He said it won't really that many. So I won't that far <laughs> off with my question. I mean, it was statues. You know, statues, you know, they be like nude one time. It was one ill statue that of uh, this Native American got hit by an arrow and they actually like did the scar. It was really, like, really, uh, it was like really in depth. So I'm gonna see what I can do with the footage. Hopefully it's not like a bunch of, you know how to, when you're moving around real fast and it's all shaky and stuff or whatever, hopefully I can do stuff with it. Yo, that's whatever. the shit right there, man. You're, you're mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought up Native Americans tonight. Yeah. I, I, I can resupport you. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you say you're tired. Do you need any help with anything? Um, I am. I'm, I'm good for right now. I just going to see what else I could chop up during the week or whatever and see where I can fly out there. <laughs> Hashtag much, but, uh, Pat should edit. Hashtag Pat should edit. Make sure y'all uh keep encouraging to do more uh with getting them out of his shell. 
Oh, and also while we doing housekeeping anyway, um, be looking out on Saturday is coming soon, coming soon. Saturday is coming soon. Face, you want to tell about it? Oh yes, oh yes. New weekly marijuana new show coming every Saturday morning. Burnt and early, burnt and early. Yes, once again, burnt and early. Check us out this coming Saturday, episode one. Hey, I'll be tuned in myself, and I know y'all will be too, Pod Squad. And uh, since we already hollering that face, man, and uh, everybody seems to be doing good, man, let's go ahead and kick this bitch off, man. Uh, face, what you got coming up first, man? What we talking about first? Oh, man, first, man, we got our normal weekly financial tip, brother. Um, This week, we talking buying in bulk. Oh, yes, buying in bulk, especially if you have a family. Now, if you're single and you're out there, you may not have the need for so uh, a large quantity of anything because it's just you. You may have a lady or a man friend from time to time, but majority of the time is you. So your food supply or your condiment supply or your toiletry supply or just the everyday normal shit, you don't need uh, an abundant supply. But if you have a family, you always need an abundant supply of something because People run through shit so fast. You'd be surprised how fast four asses can go through two rolls of toilet tissue. You'd be surprised. So buying in bulk is always your best bet because if you buy, let's say you want to go to the store, I'm going to buy a, a, a 10 pack right now and then I'll wait two weeks. No, you ain't going to wait two weeks because what if somebody gets sick? What if you have multiple kids? Multiple kids get sick in the house. That's ample supply of toilet paper you're going through. What if you got older kids and a wife and everybody going through the, the that time in the month? That's toilet paper. Shit like that goes too fast. Buy stuff in bulk. Sure, buying in bulk right now seems like you're paying more money. But that little bit of more money you're paying right now saves you that much more monthly on your monthly expenses. If you go to the grocery store four or five times during the month, taxes, that extra stuff you buy, it don't equal up to the quantity. You feel me? You want your quality and the amount of money you're spending to match up with your quantity. Buy in bulk. You see your dollars match your quantity. Financial tip of this week, buy in bulk, especially if you have fam- families, man. I ain't got no argument there. That that sounds pretty solid. Especially if you got a deep freezer, man. Uh, that shit will get you through. You will be yes, like, indeed. Oh, I don't feel like going to the grocery store tonight. I don't have to. Let me thaw this shit out. Mm-hmm. Enjoy a nice, good meal. Uh, also, vacuum sealing food. So if you buy in bulk, like vacuum packing your food, makes it last even longer in the freezer. And uh, yeah, I, I I'm 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 with you there, for Especially if you got a family. Now, like he said, if you're single, it may not make as much sense. Um, but even if you're single, man, like buy a little extra and put it to the side, you'll be surprised that like you'll have you a nice little six month supply of food where you might not have to go to the grocery store, but to get a, an occasional side. I put it like this. I remember when I was single and when I started buying bulk back then. Um, I forgot what store it was, but I stumbled upon a sale for like a 10 pack of the deodorant I was using at that time. I knew what the five pack normally cost. It, it wasn't, and it wasn't two times that. It was probably like two times that minus like two or three hours. I was like, oh shit. Okay. Farm press. I'm gonna spend a little bit, I'm gonna spend a little bit more right now, but I'm gonna get this quantity and I'm gonna save in the long run because if I buy another two pack or five pack, I'm gonna end up spending more money than I don't want to spend in a short amount of time. But I, let me go ahead and put this little bit of two or three dollars extra out right now. Get these extra deodorants. Stash these jumps in the crib. Three months from now. Oh, shit, I still got deodorant. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> Arm still fresh. I used to work at Sam's Club, so now I'm all about bulk. <clears throat> so, I mean, bulk. I, that's a solid tip there, man. Once again, this is advice that personally use. You feel me? Like I'm not gonna give y'all none that I don't try or do myself persistently. Um, Sam's Club, good to investment. Costco, good investment. Um, yeah, get those membership cards, man. I don't mind going in those stores. No lies detected here. And it's crazy, man. Uh, we go from such solid 
and, and just sound advice. So, oh. Damn, man. It looked like the clock was struck down. Do you do you know what time it is? Uh, hey, do you know what time it is? Hey, do you know what time it is? Yeah, do you know? It happens to be eleven twenty-eight, Wednesday, February sixteenth, and oh, this shit. and this happens to be the what the sixty-fifth episode. Six five. The sixty-fifth. Episode of the Good and Fuckery. Oh yeah. shit! It's the Good and Fuckery. Yeah. Let's get the it. Oh. We're gonna flip flop the the Good and Fuckery. It's gonna be the Fuckery and the Good. Because we're gonna deal with all the fuckery first before we get into the good part, pretty much. <clears throat> we're gonna start this fuckery with some good old fashioned hilarity. <clears throat> okay. Kevin Hart and Nick Cannon uh, prank run that they have going. Uh, Kevin Hart has sent Nick Cannon a vending machine of condoms. Okay. <clears throat> and it almost got him in trouble. <laughs> almost got the cannon in trouble but you know it was the camel what he said I think the cat is uh, Kevin Hart a camel why would that get him in trouble though uh, because the wife might be like alright so what are you doing out here in these streets where you gotta have a vending machine a condom you know so, uh, so he's paying for the condom or is like a vending machine where you just push the button and it's just coming out anyway? And it pop right on out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pop out. Yeah. And hit the wall. He might you know they got the swirly thing. We'll have baby number 15. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah, the nine. An investment for him, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, you I know, know nine is the earth single handler, but damn. Nine is the highest level of change and um the the amount of members of the Wu-Tang clan. So you know. <laughs> All right. Well, uh from condoms that prevent baby to the baby versus the wah, wah, wah. <clears throat> Oh, is this the uh, the, the, the uh, bowling alley slip and slide fight? The bowling alley brawl versus the baby and the uncle. A lot of bees. <clears throat> this is the first of all example of why punk should not jump up to get beat down. Well, I, it's been plenty throughout his career. It has plenty, been plenty of instances and um, fair warning to let y'all know that y'all should just leave the baby alone. Leave, yeah, leave him yeah. alone. He crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> leave, leave them all. And, and uh, I understand that um, this is um, Danny Lee's brother and everything. And he feels like as the brother, he, he he has to defend her in some type of way, but not at the bowling alley, not in the the what do you should say the lane, not in the bowling lane. First of all, you ain't gonna get any kind of traction, and then. It looked like if anybody got some traction, it was the baby. Because all I saw was the baby and ground and pound. Pause. Oh, it, was, it was a lot of ass whooping going on. I, I can and then, it, it was some <clears throat> ass kicking. And then that, that footage that we saw, they said that was the third time that happened. So this is, was going on throughout the day. With a marathon of just random... The baby versus the uncle actor. I'd be out here getting your ass kicked uh, several times a day. On that's, the Super Bowl weekend. Sir. But you ought to be ashamed. It, it was like some type of event where he was there. He was actually on the flyer. It was like him. I'm not sure. I think they said Chris Brown, but him also and the baby. And then I guess the uncle was like, I'm going to post up and I'm going to wait till this nigga there. And, uh, yeah. At the end of the day, when you see a nigga at a paid event and he's a celebrity, you got to know, for one, he's definitely going to have security. For two, 
you don't run up on that nigga at that time. You leave him the fuck alone because his security is probably going to jump in because they on the clock right now. This ain't him and his boys just chilling and you caught him slacking and he might shoot you to fail when this is him at a paid event. Like, and it, it's like, that ain't the time. That, that ain't the smartest time or place to try to, like, this nigga, your brother-in-law, damn near nigga. Catch this nigga at the cookout. And I, um, this, matter of fact, uh, one of the babies like security guards or whatever. Uh, I actually went to school with him. His name is Kane. He's a tall, big, <laughs> like six foot, like dog. Like you just don't oh, know. Uh, like a light skinned Kimbo like slice. Baby. Yeah. I seen him yeah. before. Yeah, be like, he went to the same high school pretty much. <laughs> and he was the same height then. <laughs> He might be a little bit taller now. I think he might have been a little bit chunky, but he's about the same height then bit as chunky. he was now. Like. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah, you just not that guy. Uh, no. What I will say is this. The baby has a team around him that is TTG, trained to go. Like, they mm-hmm. all converge and everybody played their part. You had people helping people up. You had people guiding people to stand up on the gutter. Hey, if you stand right here, you won't slide. Like, you had people escort him out of the way after the first initial knockout blow. Like, the shit was set up for failure for the brother that that, that rolled up on him. Like, sit your ass down somewhere. Think about life. Courts and authorities handle it. Stay out of people's business. If he ain't hit your sister or something like that, like, if he beating on your sister, okay. But him putting your sister on Instagram because she's acting crazy or or he feels like she's acting crazy or whatever, that's not necessarily something that you need to be going to fist the cups over. Especially if you uh, talk all this shit on the internet, then you get your ass whipped. Because then you just look stupid. Don't, just look real don't, stupid. Get me, don't, don't get me wrong. I definitely don't promote putting your business out on social media, even though I said how much I would actually do for 900 million. But I personally, not your personal, personal business, like, like family business on social media. Yourself. But Keep these them. days, it's up the wild, wild west, pretty much. But yeah. 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 And leave the baby alone, man. Just leave him alone, man. That's a grown hey, man. Uh, this is the one to fuck with. If we ain't learn nothing else, leave. Yeah. He ain't that shot. He ain't about none of that bullshit. He is about all of the action that he so called mm-hmm. has to be about. Leave him alone. Have it. Yep, I mean, he hasn't that changed I, I, ever since he first came out. He's he's pretty pretty much the same consistent baby. That's a grown man though. That's a grown man. Just don't do that. <laughs> Just don't. Hey, look, I can tell you straight up. People like to test boundaries and shit. I ain't gonna say nobody knows for sure, but I will say this: once you done killed a man, or you done seen bullets and shit go through flesh in a certain type of way. Leave that person alone. Mm-hmm. They, they're willing to take it somewhere you ain't even thought about going yet. Just leave him alone. Leave the man alone. Yeah, so, oh, like leave it at that. Oh, I tell you like this. Dude, must have either just wanted to be famous real quick or just wanted to get his ass beat real quick. So there's no way you thought you was going to run up on him in any way possible. It was going to be anything but you getting jumped and getting your ass beat thoroughly. Yeah, by yourself. And I don't even care if you won't by yourself. If it was more, y'all, more people probably would have jumped in. <laughs> Man, that nigga so, was saying that it was people there at the bowling out of that didn't even look like they came with the baby. Like they were going different lanes, looked like they was with their own crew that came over there. And, and <laughs> so it was just like this nigga mm-hmm. had, like, like plants. It stands. Yeah, just mm-hmm. random people was situated yeah, out of the bowling alley, like, just in case some shit. You're not going to do that to the baby. Who the baby? To leave people to fuck alone. Like too many people be on the internet taunting other people. Yeah, you ain't gonna do it when I see you. Like, don't say it's on site if it's not on site. Because on site exactly. doesn't mean when I see you, we're gonna talk. On site means when you see me, you're gonna do something to That's me. It. Or Punch. if you already over you if you already told me it's on site, 
Now, when I see you, I got to do something to you before you do something to me because I know your intentions uh, you are to do mm-hmm. something to me. You feel me? So that's the mind frame these people in the internet got to realize. They're putting people in by their words. Words mean something. And when they have the necessary effect on the other person you're delivering these words to, don't be surprised by the reaction. Everybody's always so surprised by the reaction. Oh, I can't believe this person did this. What was the catalyst in that situation? Don't get mad at the reaction. The reaction is just. Mm-hmm. You can't get mad at somebody react how they react. You feel me? So what? I react ten times as much as I should. Oh well, you shouldn't have did shit. Period. This is true. That's your fault. And they yep. said the baby was trying not to do shit. They said the baby had like tried to walk away a couple of times. In the day. Exactly. So it's like, if I'm telling you, hey man, I ain't even trying to go there. Like, as yeah, a man. Fine. As a man, I was always taught, and, and maybe this is just some old school shit that don't apply no more, but I was always taught, like, as a man, like, if you approach a man, man to man, and like, hey, what's good? I want I want that fade. If that man declines, like, you got to kind of, like, hey, it is what it is. He don't want that fade. It, it ain't really what it is. Then you got to have a conversation with that man. And mm-hmm. I don't know that you ever tried to have a conversation with that man. Like, you don't just jump straight into whooping a nigga ass, like, I want to be. You ain't talking about anything. You, got anything. anything. you going off of like a very uh, uh internet clip and whatever your sister done said, which is gonna be completely her One side. Second. Exactly. Get yeah. the whole story. And the bias. A lot of niggas that I don't that I know and I don't heard of that then jumped in some 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 domestic shit and ended up they end up being in the wrong because what they thought was happening mm-hmm. was the whole story, and then you end up looking mm-hmm. like. Then you got your ass whooped and it come out that the baby hadn't done nothing wrong. Now you look double dumb. <laughs> double dumb. Double dumb. Don't be double dumb. Stupid. <laughs> Don't go full <laughs> retard. Don't go full <laughs> retard. Don't go double dumb. Double dumb. <laughs> double dumb, man. I'm telling you. Dumb. Dumb and dumber and double dumb. <laughs> dumb da dum dum. That's what it's gonna be like. That's what you're gonna hear if you keep uh, messing around with the baby. Dumb da dum dum dum. But after that nigga killed that nigga in Walmart, nigga fucking with the baby is dumb da dum dum dum. Yes. Leave that nigga alone. Please do. Just leave him alone for your sake. He ain't backing down. If it's you and him, <clears throat> he going on. Leave that man alone. What you want? You, but you want to know the fucked up thing about that whole story? Mm. Twenty four hours later, that section where the dude died at, people was rolling their shopping carts right through that area once again. Probably less than twenty four hours, because Walmart ain't gonna stop moving. <laughs> Hey, y- y'all done getting y'all pictures and y'all fingerprints? All right, cool. Clean up on now, now. Let me get this shit up. Let's go. <laughs> we got stock to put up. <laughs> now, Damn, like- <laughs> Niggas need to get their cinnamon toast crunch. You know, and almond milk. You know, <laughs> there ain't no death gonna stop that. Yo, right. <laughs> it's happening in Virginia or whether this is just a Georgia thing. Or whether I'm just really, really, really late to the party. But did y'all know they giving folks uh like free EBT? Yeah, yeah. they've been, they they been doing that shit. Oh, okay, yeah, they sent me yeah. in the car. I was like, oh, all the nigga, we went and got crab legs and all that shit. Yeah, I damn sure did. I sure did. It was money for food. I went and bought good food. <laughs> and I have a bunch of groceries. Like I could have went and paid for everything I paid for tonight with hard with cash. I gotta look into that. But the government is willing to help its hardworking citizens. So why not let yeah, it help? It was free and I ain't I don't care. The woman gave me a card with sixteen hundred dollars worth of grocery money on it. Yep. I think I ain't swiped up. Nigga, what? Nigga, Swipe? crab legs, yeah. lobster cakes. Goddamn, we had a whole goddamn seafood bro tonight. Mm-hmm. On 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 thank Joe Yin did shit else. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. Chicken. Chicken. That is peasant food. I am eating royal quick. Nigga, I got <laughs> 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 I got <laughs> impossible burger. This is duck. 
Hella impossible burger. I'm talking about I'm eating burgers till my, my fucking skin turned to burger. It's about to be burger on burger on burger. Like I'm talking about it, we got the snacks. It, it, it was a very good day. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good. Yeah. Look, it, look it's, at God. It's, it's more snaps where that came from, man. I'm about to I'm about to burn that fucking card up. We about to eat good. Damn right. But on on Joe. Thank you, Joe. Then we're going to cop. <laughs> I gotta look into this. Pull out. I'm about to, about to ask my uncle, hey man, let me hold the truck. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> we're about to go Hamlet. We're not even going to the regular boxes on grocery boxes store. On boxes, nigga. Every, man, nigga. I'm coming out that bitch with a one of them, uh, with a pallet jack. Is what I'm about to get for bro. <laughs> Damn right, nigga. Deep freezer about to be stocked full. I am going to Whole Foods. I'm not going to the regular peasant grocery store, Walmart. It's Walmart not, wasn't even a grocery store at first. Nothing with a generic name going in the back. Believe that. <laughs> Believe that. It, it's all name brand. The government wants me to eat well. Because <laughs> they, I'm going to. They see my income every year, my wife's income every year, and they still sent me that fucking card. Happen. <laughs> With a letter attached, like here, this is all you got. Go ahead and activate it now. And you know, okay. me, I'm a nigga, so I, I I went straight to the telly and was like, let me, let me try this out on the self checkout. We going to Wegmans, not Walmart. Make sure, Bush, make sure these niggas ain't send me no. Uh, it's an ID card, and I, I swipe that bitch. No, nothing happened. And then I can't mm-hmm. ass bath full of food. I'm looking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I'm put some shit in there that I ain't even really want. I just it was free, so fuck it. But uh, that's why like going to self serve. And that shit came back with a balance. I was like, oh, I ain't never got a receipt with a balance. That that is new. When I was a kid and on food stamps. It was the the paper. Exactly. The the, the, the paper. The, the the other money. Big fit. Big that's your brown twenty. Boy. <laughs> Talking about, I got like all of the good apple sauces. I got fruit roll ups and shit. I mm. like it, 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 it's, 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 it's a smorgasbord in that bitch. Smorgasbord. Nigga got pistachios, and you know, pistachios like six dollars a bag, seven dollars a bag anyway. But I got the high end pistachio, you know, the, the nine dollar, ten dollar bag. Go ahead and throw that in there. Throw some D's on that bitch. They roasted these pistachios from the hills of Switzerland. I swiped it <laughs> so proudly, and we rolled up out that bitch like, we did it, Joe! <laughs> Nigga, I was happy as hell. Like, oh, man, the government do love me. You got the fermented uh, pistachios. <laughs> that was dipped in one. Good pistachios, boy. I want nothing to do. I ate the whole bag. I'm talking about them, got them bitches at six o'clock, bag gone before we uh recorded tonight. Crush them. Is that great poupon? Oh yeah. <laughs> and we got the fancy almond butter. You know, the, the high end shit, you know. Shit you got to scrub and mix it up. You got the oil sitting on top still, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I done forgot what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> Yeah, we was in a good and fuckery somewhere. Shit. <laughs> oh yeah, we were in the good and fuckery, but that was good. Was it, that, it was some good shit to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was some good talk. My, uh, freak no, that was good with me. But black people out there, check your mailbox. Don't throw away everything. So one of them envelopes is for you. Open that bitch. <laughs> and I was, had a black history. And I, I had put that shit on the dresser, and it was about to go in the. Oh yeah, there's some junk mail. About to go home, about to, about to throw that bitch right out. And then for some reason, I was about to iron some clothes uh, out of my son's school clothes. And I looked, and that the, the envelope just looked like it had some, some like a card. And I was like, I got no credit card I'm missing. I ain't got no debit cards. Or none of, you know, my, all my shit accurate. My current, my shit current, man. I ain't got no, no, what the fuck is that? I got a card in there. Then I was like, oh, it's going to be one of them stupid ass pharmacy cards. <laughs> you go there, they be like, I don't know what the fuck this is. This is not. <laughs> uh, you still on five ninety five for the prescription? 
<laughs> you know, just bullshit. That motherfucker was a long letter with some activation instructions, and I can call that over. That bitch said, "Yeah." We'll get all the Flintstone vitamin pills. If you don't want with this shit, I don't know this shit. I was like, y'all sent this to me. I was like, you know, we filed taxes. Y'all seen what we make? And y'all sending us free shit? All right. Let's go burn this bitch up before they take it back. <laughs> no need to let them figure out they made a mistake. You know, my well, hey, you know, once we eat it, you know, we can't necessarily shit it, it back out and get to them. You, know? you sent me a letter with this shit. That seems very intentional. You took the time to print my name on this bitch. But check your man legs tonight. Yeah. Well, let's see if I how I'm gonna segue uh free food and crab legs into the next topic. Crab legs, crab legs, like king crab legs. They usually like like snow crab legs, snow crab legs, usually like in Russia. Um and the next topic is this uh Russian girl, um Camilla. <laughs> I'm gonna mess up this one too. Um, Belaiva, Belaiva, B A L I E V A. Hold on, say that one more time. B A L I E V A. Belavia, Bolivia, Belavia, Belaiva, Belaiva, Belaiva. Yeah, well, uh, Camilla's vagina, um, she failed her drug <laughs> test. Camilla's vagina? <laughs> Whoa. That is hilarious. Uh, comma, 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 chameleon balalova. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, she failed her drug test from, um, and she, uh, it looks like she was positive for performance enhancement drugs. Why her why, excuse? What did she do? Hmm? Who is this woman? Um, about this uh, ice movie? skating. Okay, because I'm like, who? What are you talking about? Ice skating, Winter Olympics, or whatever. And it turns out they found out about it in December, but she's still in the competition. They're still investigating over it. And everything, and they say that if they find out that everything is true, she's not going to get uh, any type of trophy or anything like that, even if she did win or whatever. But nobody is getting a medal or any t- anything like that until they fully um, are over with with the case or whatever. That's, that's but. Not- um, Um, our sister Shakara Richardson says, uh, I would like to call bullshit uh, because who? Shakara Richardson. Remember her uh, last year in the, the um, first name Olympics? You said what? Said the first name by itself slow. Shakari. Oh, okay. Richardson. Uh, the girl with the orange hair, she was running in the Olympics or whatever. She got caught positive with weed and everything. She said, hey, that's not a performance enhancement at all. And she wasn't able to compete. But this girl literally got performance enhancement drugs in her, test positive, and she's still performing. Oh, like some... Uh... Privilege bullshit to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it looks like Russia is at it again in everything. Fuck you, <laughs> Putin. Much. Fuck again. you, Putin. 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 It's son be Putin. Son still be Putin. Putin. Vladimir. Uh, man, man. I feel like she has a point. I also feel like the, but I don't know if the committees are different because um, Winter Olympics supposed to Summer Olympics, but there was one loophole. They said that 
Camilla is actually like a minor. So even if she was to get caught positive with drug enhancement, um, like drugs in her, she's not like she wouldn't get in trouble for it because she's just a minor just uh, being um, told what to do pretty much. So that's that one loophole. She's too full of shit. And just like she full of them. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's always a loophole and something. It's some reason. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, from finding <laughs> finding drugs in people's systems to finding people in bushes. Uh, p- police called Kim Kardashian this morning. Uh, well, this is this morning, but it probably was a couple of days ago. But police called Kim Kardashian to warn her that she thought they thought Kanye West was disguised as a bush in front of her home. <laughs> and there's actual pictures of someone dressed as a bush in front of the home. <laughs> I'm not the one to like, you is know, encourage Kanye shenanigans. But yeah, this is hilarious. B. <laughs> this 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 is hilarious yo like i'm not the one to keep encouraging like his shenanigans because as i after a while it's, to me i feel like it's like i think he's sometimes causing his own problems pretty much or whatever but when this stuff like this happens this is hilarious uh, I'm I'm glad this happened. I'm glad it came across my news feed, so I decided to share it with y'all. Yo, the, the, I wonder be, if on that genius or ye, whatever that shit is on Netflix about him. Mm-hmm. If on the episode, it's recorded by himself, and he is the Bush. You see, I just wonder where he got. It. Where he got that costume from? Acme. Same as, as Wally Coyoteism. You gotta send me the picture of this nigga as a bush. That uh, it's, <laughs> that, it's on that link on in the in the docket. <laughs> it's, it's in the link in the docket. You want to take a look at it right quick? You just gotta scroll down or whatever. <laughs> but. You can't really tell it's him, but it is somebody dressed as a Bush. Not George Bush. <laughs> <clears throat> Not Linda Bush. <laughs> hey, hell no, man. They don't get this Oscar <laughs> Grouch looking shit up out of here, man. <laughs> what in the hell? <laughs> like dead ass, it is a nigga in a Bush costume running the fuck up. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Oh no, they said it's, it's fake, right? Oh no. Oh no. The cops will never, oh no, it may be fake. It may be a fake story, y'all. Mm, okay. But damn, yo, know, well, whoever that is in that Bush costume, that's pretty dope. Oh, so. Pretty fucking dope. That's a pretty damn good costume on me. But man, you don't get the hell out of here. Your big ass, whoever that is, running off. I don't mean no sense. <laughs> but um I'm done. I I I can believe it. I believe it. I, I don't this- care if it's fake or not. People talk about fake news all the time. This is some fake news. I'm gonna believe it because it's hilarious to me. To me. It, it- and the ba- and the funny part about it is like if it is fake news, shame on them for posting it. If it ain't though, this is some Kanye shit to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. full ass costume, like because that costume is it, it looks like it's worth like like so whoever rented it paid a nice little piece of bread. The shit looks People, like a damn bush. I I, <laughs> I was not expecting. I, I'll put it this way: if if it's an if it's one of his uh, outfits. One of his Yeezy outfits that he's selling, along with them boots. I believe in it. I believe it. 
I believe it. Even if this ain't true and he still does it. Stalker edition. It'd be like a a flight jacket covered in leaves. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 is exactly what you do too. I can see that. <laughs> Out there looking like a guy like he in a deer blind. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah, the fuckery just get worse though. Um so uh, a FedEx worker is going to be on paid leave because after being shot by two white men, um, and the white men are facing criminal charges after a black uh, FedEx Express driver alleged that he was chased and shot at while delivering packages at Brookhaven, Mississippi. So, well, when you uh, see that, my- that kind of tells us uh, why. Mm-hmm. Mississippi. And if you um looking at the length of beard on these white men's faces, uh they look like one of them <laughs> mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe it. Definitely some time to give him shit. This other dude, the the one the, the white dude with the white beard, he kind of looked like like Colonel Sanders in the face. Like I would literally. You know what? Um, Pod Squad, y'all gonna have to give me a second. I gotta go get me a piece of chicken. You done made me hungry. I'll be right back. (laughs) What do you look like, Colonel Sanders? For real. Hell no. (laughs) The other dude look like the other dude look like one of the Wyatt family or something from WWE when uh-huh. With the beard and everything. Accurate, Accurate but, description. Gregory Charles Case, age 58. That's the guy that looked like Karen, um, like Colonel Sanders. And the guy that mm-hmm. looked like he's in the Wyatt family is Brandon Case. He's 35. And he looks he looks 35. Because white men in their 30s look like they're in their 50s and White men in their fifties look like they're in their seventies. Sometimes, not all the time. Now if they're rich and they get the Botox <laughs> and, and everything, you know. They, yeah, they if they're rich and everything, they they you know, great. They try to look young forever. Ryan Gosling and whatnot, Matt Damon, <laughs> whatever the <laughs> whoever the fuck <laughs> looks like. <laughs> Like, uh, what's the fuck? I think name Johnny right. Depp is Matt Damon. Jack Sparrow is <laughs> whatnot. They, they got good careers, like good acting careers or whatever. They look mm-hmm. like they're the same age forever. Mm-hmm. But after that acting career is gone and the drugs start kicking in or whatever, that's when all the age starts showing up. Um, pretty much. Um, uh, <laughs> oh man yeah no Mm-mm. I'm just talking shit until he gets his chicken back uh, his chicken yeah, it, bro. get it heated up devour it and come back like yeah mm. mm-hmm. 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 thanks Joe <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the free chicken <laughs> damn right Mm, don't give mm. it up. Or if you give enough free food and it's good food, ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna take it. I'm tell you right now, I I would I'm I'm not for the simple fact that Walmart is not 24 hours anymore. I'm going to all the high class places like the fresh markets, the whole foods, whatever. And I, I'm not even one of those extra, you know, stay healthy motherfuckers, you know, which I probably should because uh, I had this pain in the chest the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they were smart, if they were smart, now you know how they get all these, uh, like a lot of people on the side of the roads that sell their own fresh produce they grow. So mm-hmm. If they smart, they would have cell phones with the little app 
and the little adapter that allow people to use their EBT cards so they can buy fresh produce from them out there mm. and still get money. That's cool. You gotta tap you? into the game, baby. Tap into the game. Hey, face. <laughs> Chicken is good, ain't it? That shit disappearing <laughs> like a motherfucker. Chicken is good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see no skin. It was it was it was That's invisible. Bad. It was I ain't seen no chicken. All I seen was a damn bone. <laughs> yeah, I ain't seen nothing. It was just like an x-ray. <laughs> Shit. This nigga hitting the Thanos on them goddamn chickens. <laughs> One, two, three, done. One. <laughs> this whole side right here. He he look at the chicken plate like look at this whole side here for devour. Right, this should be great. I got a little surf and turf with the poultry, you know, I got a little lobster, <laughs> a couple crab legs and you know, a little piece of chicken. Ain't got no, ain't got no shrimp in there, man. Yo, I believe you. I believe you. Oh yeah, that's we got the shrimp in the freezer. I believe you. I believe you got that card, dog, because you been <laughs> you had the fruit roll ups. Oh, you thought I was playing, nigga? I'm dead ass man. I don't play by no money. No, I'm not playing with no food either, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Let me put this shit back real quick, man. I got this calamari. <laughs> Where we at? What, what was y'all talking about when I came back? Oh man, um, FedEx the driver. FedEx dude. He looked like Colonel Sanders. Uh, we stated his name and everything. Um, but fuck them. <laughs> and I'm laughing, so I want to get into the good stuff because I like the good stuff. Um, get into it, then, man. Oh, all right. Uh. Y'all seen that Black Adam trailer? Like the new DC trailers and stuff like that? It, it looks pretty good. Where would it's, I see? Where are people seeing trailers at these days? YouTube. Oh, okay. Trailer. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I don't have no yeah. pop up on my feed that be like, oh, this trailer. Like, I found it out about them. You. What trailer are we talking about? Uh, Black. Black Adam, the DC uh, Universe trailer or whatever Where? they had. Some of Batman, some of Flash, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then there was a couple of other characters I didn't expect, like Pierce Bronson being Dr. Fate, which is like their being who? Uh, answer. Pierce Bronson. Um, Pierce Bronson. What is his name? Being Dr. Dr. Fate. Dr. Know. Fate. Dr. Fate is, I would say, DC's answers to Doctor Strange, but he was out before Doctor Strange, pretty much. Got it. But um, so he was another character that uh, Marvel kind of ripped off of DC and then maybe they- yeah, the Marvel and DC have a, a history of them ripping off each other. You know, yep. the character Lobo is a rip off of Wolverine. Deadpool is a rip off of Deathstroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. But I was just like shocked that they had Dr. Fate up there. But it looks pretty good. I'm actually curious to see where they're gonna like where the rock is gonna go with Black Adam. Because I know it's gonna be like action with it or whatever. But yeah, because they're supposed to meet up against Shazam or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to pay attention. You know, this is my question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I know it's a lot of comic book stuff. Well, all of it's comic book stuff. You feel me? But mm-hmm. my thing is, why don't either the DC or Marvel Universe currently, like right now, make up a brand new motherfucking character and introduce them in one of these movies and develop them? You feel me? And then give him a comic book and build a fan base off that because I feel like <clears throat> in tune now, like people in tune now and, and tune in watching because they like the movies and they have a, a background base in comic books and they finally get to see they they childhood heroes and childhood comic books 
that actually look good on the screen now. You feel me? Like the, the movies look good. But to put somebody like brand new, they never seen it and watch this person develop, like, who is this motherfucker? Ain't no comic book, like you going, you looking for this motherfucker through comic book, like who the fuck is this nigga? I've never seen this motherfucker. And you feel me like he's doing this, this uh, new shit and he's building movie. You think they build a franchise around this motherfucker? I feel like he's cool, cool shit. I would say almost anything new these days. I would say the main reason why that doesn't happen is because if you think about it, the only reason why the characters we know are good characters is because they have pretty much like 50 years of writing and 50 years of fuck ups so that they know what's works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. A new character, a new character off the blue, we don't know if that's going to work. We don't know if it's going to offend nobody. We don't know if it's going to encourage some people. We don't know what is going to work. We don't know if it's just gimmicky. Right now. He's that motherfucker. He, he's an old school. He, he's the old school superhero that offends everyone, but still gets the job done. <laughs> Get out the way, nigger. Gotta help you out. <laughs> oh, no, they got that. It's called Peacemaker. It's on HBO Max and it's starring John Cena. Uh, it's actually a pretty good show, even though it's John Cena. And um, yeah, they got it up there. John Cena is. Peacemaker up there. His dad is a white supremacist, and eventually, they, and there's an alien invasion involved. And um, yeah, it's actually a pretty good, so surprisingly my question, good. My question for that series is that timeline for that movie set before or after the timeline of Suicide Squad two? After Suicide Squad two. It's okay, right so, after. It's so immediately he after. So he didn't mm-hmm. die when they said yeah, when and, they, and they they explain why. He did. Okay. Okay. Cool. But it's surprising. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to entertaining. Me. Cause I was like, "What? This a show?" I was like, "How the fuck they got a show?" When I watch this nigga get, you feel me? But if they can explain it, I fuck it's, with it. Feel like, it's, I'm it's, fuck with. It. I'm not even going to lie. It's weird as fuck, and it seems like it intentionally tries to offend or whatever to show like, it's like a sarcastic thing. Like, they, like, John Cena intentionally basically acts as a douchebag or whatever because it shows how much his father has turned him into this douchebag, but he's trying to be a good person or whatever. Like he say stuff, like he say compliments that are like back could be back, yeah, backhand compliments or whatever. Like, understandable. Yeah. So, but he thinks it's a good compliment, but you, you know how that ignorant goes. But it's actually a good. It's weird. It's weird as heck. And I think if it wasn't for it, if it wasn't weird, then it wouldn't be a good show. Pretty much. So, yeah. I guess it and then the, the same guy that did Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad, James Gunn, mm-hmm. he also did, he wrote that whole script. So that's probably okay. why it's good. He's good at making weird shit be serious. Okay. Here we go there. Well, see if James Gunn can redo Homeboys and Out of Space and make that into something real good. I think he could do that. I, think, I would be, I would believe it so. Yeah. But um mm. I give him a shot. More. James Gunn James something Gunn pretty dope. Yeah, he is. He's 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 kind of Quentin Tarantino-esque somewhat, but his own style to it. Like it's Oh, it fits whatever he actually trying to put across or whatever. It, it seems more new age or whatever or whatnot. No, I want to see. Mm-hmm. I want to see a Quentin Tarantino space movie. I can see that. I would. It'll probably still be Tarantino. Everything though, so I'm biased as hell. <clears throat> yeah, it, it'd probably be like Fifth Element esque versus like. Some type of Western 
type thing, like like space western. I'm interested. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. I am. I fuck with it. I'm the baddest motherfucker in the galaxy. Prove it. <clears throat> that type shit. <laughs> I fuck with it, but then again, yeah. never know. But we talking like there's a real movie coming out. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, one real movie I'm kind of excited for is the next is Doctor Strange because they put out the new um trailer and um I heard Patrick Stewart's voice in the background. So what I said is true. Professor X is in it. He's in it. If y'all get a chance, I put the the um the link on the trailer. I mean, the link in the of the trailer on the docket. Mm-hmm. I saw and uh, it's uh, an Illuminati thing coming out. Yeah, yeah, it's this um, Illuminati is this group of like extra smart people on Earth, and they have this mindset that if we all would have gave each other some type of knowledge we could prevent it a whole lot of stuff the, i think the it was like a a scroll cree roar or some shit and it got a little too close to earth and they figured if they put their resources together they could prevent it and that's what they call illuminati and it's like reed richards um professor x uh, dr strange uh that's another smart Black Panther, but he wasn't really for it at first. He said, this is a dumbass idea. No, no, that's 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 hellfire. They the they act like the Illuminati that we think Jay-Z and them is is (laughs) signed to pretty much. Got it. We know that's some bullshit. That's that's how they act. This Illuminati is like they're trying to prevent stuff. They're just extra super smart people on Earth. Bad. And um, Namor the Submariner. And I think that was one of the reasons why Black Panther didn't really want to be a part of it because Namor was in it and they got beef. Namor and Black Panther had beef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but it looks crazy. I saw a zombified version of like Doctor Strange with all these arms at the end um, or whatever. Uh, there's like these Ultrons. There's Doctor Strange is like putting these technical handcuffs or whatever and brought in front of the Illuminati or whatever. And uh, yeah, I, 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 it's a lot of shit going on. I want to see what happens next. I'm actually pretty excited about this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to know if all the, the rumors is going to be true, but I, I really feel like the Illuminati is probably going to be Reed Richards, and we know it's Professor X in it and whatnot, but I'm still guessing who the other people are, because we can't have the Black Panther, because Marion of Cain. That could be true. Could be true. I know Baron Mordo is involved or something in it, but... <clears throat> I'll be a bad guy again. If I get any um, leaks or any ideas of who it is, I'll let y'all know, of course. But, yeah. Yeah. Please, please. And when is this movie? Um, May. Okay. May 2022. May 2022. Um, so, the end of Good and Fuckery off, we're going we're gonna to start off with a little West Coast action pretty much. First off, Snoop Dogg is the owner of Death Row Records. Yes, he is. Just in time to drop his new album that <laughs> dropped that Friday back on Death Row. <laughs> right before Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he had a hell of a marketing strategy. His rollout was decent. That was one hell of a rollout, man. And then... And then the Super Bowl halftime show. It got Super a bit. Bowl halftime show I have ever seen in my life, personally. Like, it may have yes. Been the ones <clears throat> if I was born or something, but as far as the ones I've seen since I've been born, best one I've seen in 38 years. Like, that shit was fire. The only <laughs> one I could think of that could top it is uh, Janet Nip Slip, Michael Jackson in All White Smoke, and uh, Prince playing Purple Rain in the Rain. That's the only mm. other ones I could think of. 
I'll go with you on the Michael and the Prince. I don't know about the, the Janet ain't. It was larger as far as the notoriety from it, but like yeah. it was the actual half. <clears throat> It wasn't better. Oh no, they, this was ultimately a better show. No, no malfunctions. They can do with technology now so that the live show <clears throat> is crazy as hell live, but it also ties into what you're seeing on the screen visually. Like the way they mm -hmm. make Trey come up from that digital whatever. Now you feel like you did. That shit was hard. That shit was yeah. so hard. <laughs> that the golden that right nigga, the golden lord. Oh, oh I was getting to that. Oh, yeah. I was getting to that. It's like Snoop and Dre come out, and then go, go, Fat 50 Cent come out. Man, they begin on 50 Cent. <laughs> 50 Cent. Has definitely been hitting them 40, for sure. For yeah, sure. He, they, had, they had the fat dude looking like Hamburglar. They think that they even star, too. He got that free 1600. True, true. But I didn't even expect him to, I didn't even think he was. I didn't. They didn't say he was going to be in it. I think he was just a surprise or whatever. But at the same time, that's free promo for all his shows that he got coming out. Indeed. Indeed. It's a lot of big business going on. Then Mary J. <laughs> Mary J. Finally Crush. getting the check. Legend crush. Mm. She hit. Her, she hit the uh, the the Mary shoulders one time for him. You know she had. <laughs> just seeing Mary hit the Mary bop on at the halftime. Of the Super Bowl, just it was just everything for me. I don't know why, but that just just that move there. Oh man, come on! And I'm glad she's she got a, she's getting the check because she. I saw some article saying that she's been broke since that divorce or whatever. So mm. I I don't know what she considers broke. I mean, her I'll broke may be a bit different. <clears throat> broke might be our broke three hundred million to like now. I got like <clears throat> hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah, she was looking good that night, and then yeah, Golden Lords came out, and well, I'm I'm gonna tell you, Kendrick Kai, stole the show to me. Kendrick, that was it. I was good. and I was Hamptonian who photographed <laughs> that uh thing that uh that okay. that part of the show. So oh shit, definitely uh, loving that. Yo, Kendrick, it, he knows how to perform. I don't know what it is. He gets into that mode or whatever where he's just part of the art and he just get in that mode, man. The halftime show was black as fuck, man. Let's just call it what yeah. it was. Shit was black <laughs> as fuck. And I loved every minute of it. It was so even when the white boy came out. Like the white boy had to do some black shit. It yeah, he like, did. Fuck. Gotta move me to Neil. Let me go ahead and get my shit on. Make sure y'all. And not only that. Big ups to Anderson Pock in the background on the drums, killing it. Boy, Anderson, <clears throat> yo, that is the happiest man on earth. <laughs> I've <laughs> never seen anybody that smiles <clears throat> all the time. Like, you never see him upset. Like, when never. that nigga is pissed off at somebody, he's probably like, yeah, man, fuck you. Yeah, even oh, even on... Uh, I'm gonna stab you now. Like, oh, that nigga smart. is happy all the time. Like, he has the most exuberant joy. Like, he got that joy that, like, he light up the whole stadium. Like, hey, everybody, y'all going to be happy now just because I'm so happy. Look at me. Just like in that song. When he, even in that song where he say, this bitch got me paying the rent. In the video, he was looking happy saying it too. <laughs> I'm going to die. The happiest. I need to buy both. <laughs> if you ever wanted to see what Happiness looks like personified, brother Pop. But I will say, I will say, I just like the fact Dr. Dre is he put up, he let, he basically um, had. What am I trying to say? I got a frog in my throat. I probably need to call first before I can get this thought out. Wait one second. I'm gonna put. But he basically showed how much he is has gotten all these artists out pretty much like yeah. everybody had their little moment of shine in it yeah pretty much like his res that's like his resume his resume is impeccable that super bowl show was impeccable yo i i would say the only thing that could have made it better was if during california love they had a pock hologram just bust out it as soon as i stepped mm -hmm. on the street like that stadium would have broken down from the like seismic activity. Mm. Like it would have been a wrap. 
Yeah. And uh, his piano skills is dope. He has some piano skills like love. Yeah. And uh, some, somewhere in the stands, somewhere in the stands, Jay-Z was reciting his, <laughs> his, his song that he wrote <laughs> for Dodge Dre. Oh, look at him writing, look at him rapping my shit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those writers, oh. those writers. And somewhere in America, somebody decided to write an obvious uh, report on Snoop Dogg's behavior pregame uh, on a New York Post of him. Um, Snoop Dogg was seen smoking before his performance. Well, Snoop Dogg is seen smoking everywhere. So, in other words, at this point, at this water, point, if you still thought that was enough of a story to write up, something is wrong with you and your journalism. Like in, in other news, water listen, is wet. Right. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's all does. That is why Snoop is famous because he's the uncle that's always high and smoking reefer in weird places that nobody else can smoke reefer, but he can. Like, he's the one person that will show up in a non smoker's house. They have never smoked ever and would never smoke. But as soon as Snoop comes in, oh, man, I hit it one time. Come on, you can smoke it here. It's all good. It's Snoop. It's almost Snoop. But he was living Blood in the That nigga had. I did just. Snoop was so happy. He was like, these niggas is in my hometown. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. Um, also, um, I hope all of y'all were safe out there because they said uh, California is real nowadays. So people just getting round up on and, and robbed. But luckily, I didn't hear any reports of that. Just that one uncle that got beat up by the baby. Is that a new thing? Mugging is back now? We're doing that again? Mugging. Man, man, for the past man, for the past couple of months I've been hearing, I even heard the police say, hey, if you're coming to Los Angeles, be safe. They're doing this shit in broad daylight. Well, like then. the police is warning people. <clears throat> like, well, yeah, people, so. you out there in LA, please be safe. Ice T even mm-hmm. said, "All you rappers coming for Super Bowl weekend, please be safe because they're not playing no games out here. Every time there's a bit, somebody in LA is saying, "Hey, watch your ass." Watch Some type of rap. <clears throat> well. It seems like I ended up the good and fuckery with some fuckery anyway after we said the good, but and the fuckery, the good, the fuckery, and the good, and then the more fuckery. They interchangeable, and um, the good and a whole lot of fuckery, whole lot of fuckery. Um, Oh, okay. And uh, uh, with that being said, that takes us to this week's tears take. Now, this tears take is inspired by. Um, a pod squad member that is pretty much, you know, one of the kings of the pod, uh, brother Last Call. Um, he sparked my interest in a, in one of the chats of one of our video premieres uh, this past week, and he was talking about the Black Seminoles uh, of Florida, and he was like, you know, he was reading up on it, and he thought it was pretty interesting. And he was like, y'all should talk about it. So I have an interesting way I wanted to kind of approach the topic. Um, and my tears take for this week is, America has not really advanced since the 1800s. And when I say that, I am talking in reference to its treatment of indigenous and uh, black people. So uh, for those that don't know about the black Seminoles out there in, in the pot scarred world, uh, originally in Florida, uh, Florida was a Spanish colony, obviously, and they were not owned by Britain. So uh, they would have, um, kind of conflicts with uh, Britain and British colonies. So there will be South Carolina colonists that will come down and raid areas of Florida um, for resources and, you know, just trying to basically extend the territory of the America. Um, so over time, the Spanish government basically was like, all right, we tired of this shit. We need some extra people down there in our colony. So what they did was they opened up uh, sex of land to uh, 
or allowed freed blacks, runaway slaves, and the native peoples that were getting away from their own tribes for whatever reason to come to these lands and settle um, with the bargain being you would run these missions. And through running the missions, you would um, like, you know, like a mission, like the fort type mission, like a religious type mission, not a like you're doing on on the quest. But like they were running, them, yeah. But they were running the mission, uh, and basically you would they would defend the territory for the Spain Spaniards. But basically these people ended up being um, called Seminoles. So Seminole is not even an, an original tribe or anything. It's not like there was a tribe called the Seminole Natives before these colonies. Um, the Seminole came from they um it was a like Cimarron or something like that, which basically was like where we get the word maroon from, or like mixed people um, who are kind like of Spanish. Place. Right. And it was with the uh, Muscogee Creek uh, natives who ended up having some of their people kind of leave their tribe and go join these uh, settlements. Um, they was calling these people Maroons or like people who leave their their group and left. Them. And over time, yeah, yeah. it ended up like Cimarron, Cimarron, because of the dialect difference and the accent difference between the natives and the Spaniards. It that turned into Seminole. So basically, it was basically a broad term at first that was used to just describe anybody that was leaving their original group and kind of going off to settle outside of that on their own. And then it became the overarching label for these peoples, this mixed group of like native, uh, like exports, um, freed blacks, runaway slaves, um, people coming from the Gullah the Gullah region of South Carolina, Florida, like that, uh, that, that uh, lowlands area, they were coming mm -hmm. to settle in because it was like, oh, we can have pretty much free land out here. Um, and I'm not, I, I haven't done the full research. Like I, I just started researching this week, but I would almost be willing to say that the settlement rose would probably stems from the fact that we already had that strong presence in Florida when Florida became colonized and uh, became purchased by America. But I, I say all that to say this. Um, I think that this group is a cool like microcosm of like what being black in America is. Like if you think about it, like we're all from different places settled here. Like what's considered black today is not just like people of African slave descent. They like they lump everybody and they they lump Native Americans that are really dark into that group. They lump, yeah. they lump people from the islands into that group. They lump uh, the Taino people and those like native peoples from like uh, lower Mexico that are darker. Moreno. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ta Taino, one of them, some with a T. Is, uh, yeah, is some, some of them call them Taino, some of them call them Moreno. It's like Moreno is like, uh, that's when they call a browner skinned person. And I think yes. it's something. Them people. It's a, yeah, it's something else for like Blanca, for like white. And, Oh, yeah. All of the dark people, though, they lump in with us. And, and it's like we are basically like now in America, the whole country is pretty much anywhere where you have black people is pretty much a macrocosm of what being a Seminole is. Like we're all Seminoles now. Like we're displaced from our original group. We don't have a direct connection to our original tribes anymore. Like them people got branded as this new term, Seminole, and they became a tribe. But only because the government couldn't figure out what else to call them. And once they called them that, now these people were able to be labeled, placed, and categorized in certain ways that made them more or less susceptible to being having access to the resources of the government and having access to certain, you know, rights and stuff. So again, like we we don't have that direct connection. Like them people, the Muscogee Creeks, they ended up now they're seminal even though they might have started as Greeks, now they're Seminoles. We might have started as Nigerians or Ethiopians or, you know, whatever. And now we're just Black. Um, other Blacks from our original tribes have named us something different to reflect our new place. Just like the original Muscogee Creeks and the other Native American original tribes started calling these peoples the Seminoles because they were, they were leaving their tribe and they were no longer with their original group. Now we are Black. Now we are like other black people from the world that are from their yeah. native black, their native African or whatever countries. They don't see us as a part of them. They consider us as our own separate tribe because we are so different. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then last but not least, 
just like the Seminole Indians of Florida, we are used to defend this country in return for freedom. We, we, you know, we pretty much become a tribe of our own mix of na native Africans, Latinx and other minorities who've been displaced. And now all of those group, all of our groups that are considered black are some of the highest uh, groups of the first people that are often on the front lines to defend this country, despite not fully being free, but given that, that, um, that illusion of being free. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in my opinion, all we've done is enlarge and change the label from Seminole to black, but it is still the same concept that America, and that hasn't changed since the 1800s. So it is my tears take for the week. America ain't changed in 200 and some years. Still the exact same place. Hell uh, yeah. That um, remind me, I seen, um, I think I seen this vid of T.I. saying um, one of the main reasons why we didn't get reparations because the people that already got reparations, they already have a defined like nationality, like Jap Japanese people got reparations for like the concentration champ and all those. But black is not a actual nationality is just a description it's or whatever which is is basically the new age version of Seminole, like you say it or whatever it's not really it's just something to put aside so you can't really put any emphasis to it or whatever like and how i say and he was saying that until we actually have like a an actual nationality that we can claim or whatever, then that whole prop, uh, process of reparations can begin and all that stuff. But really, to tell you the truth, that's a, to me, I just feel like that's semantic or whatever. Because mm -hmm. so what? We don't have a nationality or whatever. Um, I'm not going to say the group and whatnot because. Whoopi already got hit with that or what whatnot, but that's not really a nationality or whatever. Come on. That that's a religion. Mm -hmm. And they got reparations or whatever. Um I you know the part is I know they got reparations from a country that didn't even admit to live in the country. What was that? You you, you sound far away. I said the crazy part is they got reparations from a country that didn't even commit the original atrocity. Exactly. 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 We can't get reparations from the country that actually did the shit to us. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe we should try to apply somewhere else. Maybe it's we should also have reparations in Denmark. Man, and I'm and I'm ready to change the R. I know we ain't gonna ever get reparations. We can't get respect. From the country that committed the original crime, because mm -hmm. we are similar, so we're just gonna have to take it. I take it one further. We can't get respect from the new motherfuckers coming into the country, just because we haven't got respect from the period from the people that brought us here in the first place. Yeah, but you know mm -hmm. that leads me to a question, y'all. We're gonna um, have to take it. What, like, how can we ever get respect from any other group? Like, is that even possible? Because take it. If you think about no. So hear what I'm saying though. If you think about where respect comes from, right? It usually stems from the person themselves respecting themselves. And how can you respect yourself if you don't know yourself? Like, usually self-respect comes from knowing yourself, which allows you to love yourself. You know what I'm saying? Which allows you to then have that respect. So if you if we don't even know who we are as these quote unquote new Seminoles or black people, how do we get to a place of getting respect from others when we are not at a place to respect ourselves? Well, I, I, well, I see it as you respect. You may not have a, a knowledge of your history, but you do have a knowledge of se a, a current knowledge of self and a, a knowledge of what you uh, attain to be. Um, 
So I feel like if there is a certain level of unity and everyone has that common knowledge of self and see, okay, and like did, did everyone be self-aware on the same level and see what the whole, what us as a whole are doing and where we fucking up and how we can be better, you feel me? And, and, and don't see it as an I thing. Everything be a we, but it can't be. I, I don't see that, that that can ever be with our culture because how systematically we've been for generations been driven apart. But if it was possible for us to have that unity stand together and just see the truth in us and, and have a common knowledge of like where we currently stand and have that same knowledge, I believe we get respect from others. But I like, I feel it's so fractured right now and no one knows shit, especially the newer generations. They have a they have the or the Google generation, I should say, where you don't have to know nothing, we could look it up. So you have no knowledge, you, you have no knowledge of where you stand because you why why retain the knowledge and have knowledge of when I can just go to the computer and look it up? Nothing's important. You feel me? Like what I want to do is important. Microwave. I think, you feel me? So I mean, like, I feel it's a struggle, and it's our fault. But at the end of the day, like most things with our culture, it was started with something, that's something we had had no control over. But now that the control of it has been given to us, we keep fumbling, and we can't we can't catch the ball because we just keep fumbling, taking steps backwards, taking steps forward, side to side, fumbling the ball, fumbling the ball, all by trying to all trying to get that touchdown. But we can't get that secure hold on. It. So I mean, like, come on now. I, I believe I, I believe this is possible. Um, I take a look at just other cultures that come into our country, and I, and it, on the outside looking in, it look like they they all together. But once you just sit, like if you immerse yourself in a different culture, and just look at how some of them Americanize themselves, some of them stick to what they know, they fractured too. You feel me? It just looks different. Our our stuff looks uh, is it looks so much worse to us because our business is always in the media. Our yeah. stuff is always put on blast because once again, we are America. We set the tone. We set the culture. A lot of things in America are based off what we do and the influences we set. So we set that. When people come into the country, it. it it may look one way outside the country, but when you get in, you realize something totally different. Ooh, so, boy, you will get a rude awakening. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it looks one I way. In your country. It, if it may, this, this, that's the main reason they say don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge, don't judge a country by its cover either. I mean, we can go a lot further and a lot deeper with this. Um, don't look at a map and judge the size of a country because America ain't as big as most places that it looks bigger than on the map. Big. If I'm like, uh, we, 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 we we can we can go into some we can go into some reasons why Africa don't, it's not as big as it really is on the map, but we ain't, we ain't gonna do that on this episode. I'm gonna just pass the mic back off, man, because I I'll be going. No, that might be a good uh, conversation to have though. When we talk about the how the <laughs> why why things are shaped the way they are on the map. Oh, uh, because uh, Marigold made the map. Uh, they he was stupid, and um, he thought Greenland was bigger than Australia, and um, because he thought that he could see the whole world from where he was at, and he, and, and he made a dumbass map, and um, yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> well, yeah, I dumbass, <laughs> dumbass map maker, making mm, dumbass maps. This shit. <laughs> Since we rain, since I'm going off, let's go against the grain, man. Oh, let's go against it. So I'm gonna start off, man. Uh, my two this week, uh, uh, my second one's controversial, so we'll get that. First one, I feel that if more people pay as much attention to economics as they do sports, that the American debt will be lower, and that people will have a better idea of how to use their money if more efficiently. 
Yep. Mm-hmm. That makes yeah, sense. I can see that. You the know, Nasdaq is down. Shit. You can tell me. No Tesla. You can tell me Kareem Abdul Jabbar's stats from his second game ever played, but you can't tell me nothing about the stock market, nothing about the money fluctuation, nothing about how, how the dollar stands against the uh, a yen right now. You can't tell me none of that shit. I, I can't tell you about the yen, but some of that stock market stuff, yeah. You feel me? Oh, that's real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, is that we're thing? very obsessed with we are more obsessed with things that distract us from the issue than actually tackling the issue. So I definitely agree with that. The issue is so scary. I don't want to look at it. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. Now, let's get into the thick of it. Number two, I don't believe all kids are the future, man. I believe some of these little boogers ain't gonna be shit. Don't get me wrong now. They love the kids. But where do you think ain't shit adults come from? They used to be ain't shit kids. Man, I have long been a fan. So there's this new movement out where it's like, you know, it, every every kid should, every, every kid can make it. And I would say that, yes, they can. Every kid has the ability to make it. But most people ain't gonna make it, y'all. Like, we forget that, like, there's still a, a thing that, like, just because you got the same opportunity as me don't mean that you're going to actually work at it. You might get lazy and just be like, fuck it. You, that might not be your ambition. Like, some people just ain't going to make it, man, at the, especially at the population we had. Like, it's populations of animals that are way less than human. Some of them don't make it. Mm-mm. That is life. People keep acting like all these kids got to. Everybody ain't going to be the next whatever. Somebody going to be the next nigga up under the overpass. This is what it is. And like you can see that shit as kids. I feel what they saying. Like it be some fucked up kids that it ain't like, oh, you're a kid and you're just misguided or you're, you know, lacking love or something. Like, no, you just wired. You little asshole. You kind of wired to be a little more susceptible to be fucked up. Mm, you little asshole, and somebody need to kick you in your chest now to save us from having to do it later in life. You little bastards. Some some kids like to kick in the chest. Well, you know, I don't like humans, and uh, humans become our kids first. So, yeah, I'm along with that. Now, I will say, you can't say that to a kid. Shit. And I'm saying you can't tell the kid that because you could crush it. You don't you know can't tell it is specifically. the kid that. But, but you, you should probably up. you could there's a parent. There's a parent you can talk to. Like, look, man. Um that that little thing that you made. Hey, look, uh I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna pray for you. Cause, as a, as a parent, as a parent, you run into a lot of parents. It's a lot of fucked up parents. So, mm-hmm. so why would they care when you tell them that they kid fucked up? If they fucked up. They gonna think that the fucked up shit is right anyway. They gonna be like, "Well, what is wrong with you? Why is that not cool with you? Why y'all?" Oh, they gonna ask you to mind your fucking business. They just like keep telling me about my kid. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's why I say kick them little bastards in the chest while you got a chance. Trip their little ass up. Is discipline. <laughs> Get them adults a reality before they get old enough. I agree. Well, I'm really, I'm honest with kids. If they ask me a question or, or whatever. So, because that's what I wanted as a kid. I didn't want the, I would always get the candy coated answer and it didn't make no damn sense. And I would get pissed off because people would give me the candy coated answer until the actual answer that I'm looking for. <laughs> When that shit would piss me off. And that's why I hate humans to this day. Wait, well, that's not what we were talking about, right? Oh, it's fine. Because uh, you don't you don't like humans and I don't like technology. And uh, my I guess the brain this week is actually I don't think we really needed any new technology after 1990. I feel like much of the stuff after that has kind of made us dumb, lazy, and socially inept. Like, <laughs> in 1990, we was like at the apex of like, all right, we got 
good technology that helps us with like medicine and like you know that the normal conveniences that we need but people still had to work hard enough to like build resilience we still had enough social interaction because they the cell phones was like a brick and they was expensive as fuck to like where people would still have conversations you couldn't just facetime or, or text somebody like you had to actually talk to this person and have a whole conversation about whatever you might have to have small talk and all that so like it, it taught you skills that a lot of people don't have no more and i feel like after 1990 everything has been geared from let's make life make more sense to more let's make things more fun and it's led to these cultures of like it's just it's that's all it's about now is like what's exciting and fun but not like what's actually sustainable what's tangible what's what can we actually hold on to how do i actually talk to you past the meme like people actually talk in memes and shit now instead of like a real conversation where you've gotten to know more about each other or more about how somebody else is thinking or heard a new perspective. Like you're having a straight conversation and it's all like quick talking bullet points. It's like, it, it, it hasn't evolved us as a society to get better. We may like, sometimes when you evolve, you actually devolve and you're actually losing steam on something that was working. Like, what made us so great as humans was like we were super socially interactive and aware. Like, I feel like we're getting almost damn near to like where monkeys are and apes are when they teach them how to use like technology, like, <laughs> like, but they still can't talk to the doctor and be like, yeah, what's up, man? You know, we chilling. They still. <laughs> And when you listen to like younger generations like speak to each other, that's what it sounds like. It's a bunch of like weird grunt sounds and like even mean shit and like little sentence fragments, but it's not an actual, it's no real substance to the conversation. It's just they're talking at each other. And I feel like, like, what was we talking about the other day? Facebook were telling us about somebody. We we evolving a bone in our neck now to make it easier. Supposed to look down on the fucking phone. Like we're turning back into fucking creatures. Like we did. We did all of this evolving over millions of years to finally stand upright, have a brain that makes us be able to talk to each other and do shit that other animals can't do. And now we're going to turn back into a <laughs> the fuck. So that's my first one. Um, but yeah. And then my second one. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> and then my second one. I don't know if this is controversial at this point. <laughs> Probably is. I don't agree with none this person does. Like, nothing. Except for this one thing. I still like hella R. Kelly songs, though. Like, I be finding myself, like, singing the fuck out of shit. And then I be remember, like, oh, shit, that's R. Kelly. Damn, I ain't supposed to. Be singing this no more, but damn, what was that cut right there? God damn it. Like that that damn flirt remix with T-Pain came on the other day. I was in this bitch. Damn 28. And I'm like, oh, this, this is damn show R. Kelly. Fuck. So um I, hey man, look, I I think he is a horrendous human being. I have I hold him in the highest level of disregard and contempt. Damn, that motherfucker made a cut, didn't he? Can't nobody be doing this for the verses. Nah, I can't, might... can't nobody touch his catalog in the verses. That motherfucker. I'm going to have... 72 verses. Just you know, the I'm really... in the closet series can be like a verses by itself. Like, I would just... Like, what the fuck? Yo? It's not fair. Like, God damn it, man. Why? Why the fuck you had to be disgusted? <laughs> If because if he wasn't, you wouldn't have the songs that you have. You have to let me let me put my um and then I'll go into my gets the grain here. A lot of times, a lot of these uh geniuses, they're not right in the head either. Look at Kanye. Anyway, he's also from Chicago. Um anyway, um first of all, I when I was young. Chicago, I know they be talking about Flint, but they might want to check Chicago. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, when I was young, um, I always was suspect of R. Kelly. One, um, first of all, y'all playing these songs at a cookout with all these kids around. Like, I shouldn't be listening to this guy trying to get it in because you know it's wrong or whatever. I, I shouldn't be listening to this. Y'all are just playing this shit. I'm a child. Y'all still just playing this shit around me. Whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what, and then he's really descriptive at what he does. This is R. Kelly. You know how excited I am about comic books? That's how R. Kelly is descriptive about that. Like, he's a nerd. Like, he's, he's, you know, there's people that are nerds or like football <laughs> fanatics and stuff like that. He, he's that when it comes to describing sex that in, in sex problems. <laughs> like he knows like stat points and shit. You know, you know the clitoris vibrates at a million, million down um, mile radius and stuff like that. He knows shit like that. What they used to say, they used to say, well, nothing like an R. Kelly live show. Yo, that shit was disgusting. disgusting. I would never go. You ain't about to piss on me. See that? Oh, man. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Now no, that I think no, about it, I don't even no, want to drink this no, lemonade no, no more. That was nasty as fuck. But them songs, man. Goddamn song. His personal life died. I find it so hard. hard. Like, and I, I can disconnect yeah. from everybody else. Like, I ain't watched the Cosby show since. Oh, damn R. Kelly songs, man. This nigga, and he wrote for everybody. So it's like, I found myself in this bitch the other night. Me and the wife was in here jamming. I don't mind. I don't mind. I you don't mind like, either. And I was like, oh, damn, babe. That's R. Kelly. It was like, I mean, you can still I listen to R. Kelly. Kelly. I was like, I promise you, that is changing faces in R. Kelly. I remember that music video and everything. Because I thought he yeah. was creeping in in the video for some reason. Like, why does nigga keep popping out of nowhere? I don't mind. I, I don't know. Mind. Because he's a creep. I and he's been a creep. Oh, like, R. Kelly has always gave y'all subtle signs that he's been a creep all his career. And you can still listen to him because he's not getting any of that money. <laughs> he's not getting any of the money. They like, from the streaming. Further pedophilia. It's not funding it at all. He's He's not getting none of that money because he can't read, and and because he can't read, he he didn't get good contracts. Hey, people out there reading this fundamental man, and if you're not gonna be able to read, at least do like Floyd Mayweather did and get really good people around you that can read the contracts for you. But don't be out here being dumb and can't read. It's one thing to not be able to read, like that's a skill, but that doesn't mean that you have that you lack intelligence. That means you have not applied your intelligence to that skill to actually practice it. But don't be a dumbass illiterate person. Illiteracy is cool. I, I get it. There's a, a lot. There's a high adult illiteracy rate in America. So I understand that there's a problem that we got to fix there. But that doesn't mean you have to be so dumb that you don't know that you can't read and then don't get people in place that can actually like look out for you. And I don't mean like new lawyers. I mean like get your cousin Randy or like your mama and them to like look that shit over one time and be like, Oh no, baby! I don't think that you might want to get them them lawyers to look back at this. That, that that like you ain't gonna be, you gonna be broke as hell. Like let let somebody that you know no no love and respect and, and care about you that can read read that shit over. But don't be dumb. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. No, no, he don't want to do that. But uh, yeah, he was dumb and now he don't got no money. And because he don't got no money, that's probably why he's in jail now. Now, if he had money. Or whatever, he'd probably still be out pissing on people right now, um, and doing all that fanatic shit, and then y'all would still be defending him and his shit. But because he don't have no money, because he can't read and get good lawyers, and lawyers don't give a fuck about his situation because it's no way you can beat this situation. Um, he's where he at right now, and he's always been a creep. I always thought his music was creepy, um, but yeah. It's okay to listen to it because he's not getting any of that money because he can't read. Um, I guess I should go into my gifts the grain. So I'm on a bit simple, um, pretty much. Uh, my first one is I, I like going to the movies by myself. I don't think that's 
a bad thing. I get to enjoy the movie more. I get to see everything. I don't have a whole bunch of people asking me questions or whatever. If it's in the morning time, it's a lot cheaper. And it's usually nobody else in the movie theater. So I have the movie theater to myself so I can watch the whole movie to myself. So, yeah. Some people that I say, when I tell them this, they think it's weird that I go to the movies by myself. But I don't think, first of all, I guess for the convenience factor, I would ask just what makes you want to go all the way to the theater to do what you can do? Like, what is it? If it's a theater feel or something? Is the is either the theater feel uh, is one of those movies where you just not some movies you want to go to the theater to see like like an experience like yeah like an experience like like a like an in game or something like that I don't I want I my at the theaters like I enjoyed the hell out of it at the crib but the theater would have been dope yeah yeah like some of those you want to do that and i always said like the movie's always been one of my things i like to go by myself anyway pretty much but i can if i'm by myself i can lose myself into the story or whatever and i don't have to worry about no other distractions other than i i drunk too much i need to go to the bathroom or where's my popcorn that's it that's it and i'm only paying for me that now that is a big factor in things. That is I'm only paying for me. Very I'm not distracted by nobody else. So I don't have I can actually enjoy the movie. Period. Yeah. And I get lost in the story. So yeah. I like movie watching right. movies by myself. That's um right. my the my second one is um I don't respect all all my elders. Some some of these elders are dumb also. And they get on my goddamn nerves, and um, it because they they consider self themselves the elders or whatever, they don't fucking listen. And if they could just shut the fuck up and listen to what the fuck I say or whatever, you could have the problem that you're having with whatever the fuck you having. It'd be solved right then and there. I call with a, a old lady before this, so. I totally agree with you. But I'm not mad at you. Oh, I totally agree with you. Old people don't yeah. talk about shit. No, I no, totally at all. And, and another thing, let me tell you something. Let me, everything wrong that is happening right now is the elders' fault because we won't hear. Agreed. Fucking boomers. Y'all fucked it up. Y'all fucked it up. Y'all had the greatest time in the 90s. They signed us away to the y'all had, y'all had the most regular ass jobs with the biggest houses. With like five cars in the front. Al Bundy fucking shoe salesman and shit. Regular and shit. You can't get an Al Bundy house right now with a shoe shoe salesman job. Nigga, you can't Hell no. Fucking studio apartment with a shoe, shoe salesman job. You might can rent a room. Mike can rent a room somewhere. somewhere. If that. Mike can. Uh, notice I said Mike. It's a it's a heavy ass Mike. No, you probably no, I don't, one of them little extended stay hotel spot, the little motel, <sighs> Econo Lodge. Your mm. whole generation, y'all were catered to. Not not uh, catered to. You didn't even get your own remotes, or whatever. The remote be right beside you. You call somebody upstairs, or whatever. So home respect, not all of y'all. All right, whatever. Y'all been voting for the same damn people for the past 50 some goddamn years and ain't shit changed yet. Why the fuck I need to respect you? Respect me. Respect my mind and get your brain knocked down. Out of y'all. We just enslaved by these old ass people that can't even turn a PDF file around on their own. Oh, he he done went on with that. He get mad again. Like, fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck the kids that they made that allow them to be in the situation that they are, that they leave them right there in their home by themselves so they can goddamn have some random stranger try to guide through through some some shit that they bought themselves. Why do y'all buy shit that y- you don't know how to operate? And why do you think I should respect you? You buy a TV 
and you can't and you want Netflix to work, but you don't believe in the internet because the internet is the devil. Okay, Tiz, I'm gonna counter something you said. Okay, I, I, I don't think technology is making us dumb. I think humans are just dumb for the most part, and it's some that's going to make it, just like y'all said about the kids, and it's some that's just not. Some of them will spend their whole life dumb as fuck and be on my goddamn phone at work wondering why their life is on a channel. No phone all night. All night. On your phone. All night. Let me, let me tell you something. If you were dumb in 1930 and it's and you're still alive in 2022, look, your dumb ass just survived. But you still dumb. Okay. You were just smart enough to be around somebody that was smart enough to give you some good insurance there. Somebody around you was smart that cared about you. Somebody <laughs> and you done stressed them out so much. You done stressed them out so much that they don't pass away so you can get the rest of their insurance. Somebody loves you, baby. Somebody loves you. No, who it is. It's not me. It ain't me. I don't know who it is either. I don't care about him either. What the fuck? Somebody loves you so much. Now you get getting on everybody else. No, so what up? So yeah, I don't hey, respect all my elders. Who the fuck is him? Just be very real quick. Let me let me say this real quick, man. I'm gonna take a flashback real quick to one thing that pisses me off. One thing that pisses me off, and I'm tired of seeing is. Fucking crackheads, man. It's 2022. I'm starting to reason why I respect my new, elders. New crackheads, matter of fact. I don't respect these. Like, I, I can't stand seeing these new crackheads. Like, you you done heard about crack. You young and you a crackhead? You should be ashamed of your fucking self. This ain't this this something new to you. These old ass crackheads, they've been down since been down. I'm just tired of seeing them. They just need to go some fucking way. Give all crackheads their own little island crack and deal. Just, just give that to them. Let them all be over there. Yeah. You feel me? But these new crackheads, these brand new ones, like they they young and they becoming crackheads. Like, some, come on now. It is a weird trend. The, you you want to try crack? Hey, you got a slang crack rocker. Got a wicked jump shot. Huh? Now. Like I said, I used to teach. Some some kids ain't going to make it. 2006 and 2017, I used to teach. Now, I've seen one or at least two of my former students out on the streets strung out on crack. I'm like, you're a new crackhead. That's sad. New crack. New, new crack, man. Like, you you saw what the old crackhead was doing. You thought that was cool. Like, come on now. It's it's a level of shame and it's a level of shame. The world is in, enamored by drug culture, man. Once once the first human spun around real fast and was like, ooh, this make you feel woozy. We've been mm-hmm. fucked up ever since. Like people yeah, get high for it. Was like it's always gonna be people doing that. So it's like hey, crack ain't going nowhere. Crack is whack. Crack is cheap. But you made crack, too much money to ever be doing crack. But people still gonna be crackheads. New crackheads, like mm, I be wanting to slap these motherfucking new crackheads. Like nigga, it's crack, but that's your life, man. You gotta do what you you gotta make your own decisions. You grown, so make your own decisions. But they will take it. Like, hey, I'll let you smack me again if you give me five dollars for a hit. Exactly. Everybody is uh, exactly. Everybody got their own vice. This is true. Mine is just pussy. <laughs> you know, I've seen some. I, I asked him. I'm like, what, "What you doing out here? You, you, you see it. You know what I'm doing out here? Smoke crack, Sam. Peace out, man. Peace out. Got to leave you. Got to leave you. Like it'll be sad sometimes, but man, fuck it. You want to smoke crack, Sam? Crack, Sam. Prepare. You gonna die, man. Mm-hmm. You smoke crack, Sam? Prepare. You gonna die. Fuck Crazy Joe. My name is Crazy Flo. You thought I had eight 
Well, I got dead. Oh. That was my goof. It was. It was. That was my goof. It was. To this day, <laughs> he's one of my favorites, even though he's not like a top MC or nothing. But he is. Mm-hmm. Damn right, man. That album was a classic. Goddamn. I'm trying to tell you, yeah. man. That was a classic album. I still listen to it to this day. Of course. Damn, I'm skipping it. I'm going to tell you some other classic shit. <laughs> the Partners merch and our tray clothing. Faith, tell them about it. Well, if you take your little selves over to rtrayclothing.com, 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 one more time for them, rtrayclothing.com. Go there. You see your partner's merch. You see your r trade merch. Um, spring merch coming soon. Spring merch coming soon. It's getting warm. Um, yeah. Uh, Need some shorts in your life. Check us out on Instagram, man. R Trey Clothing 83. Instagram. New up there. Follow us. We put new clothes up there. We put little videos up there about us doing clothes and little inspirational shit too. Um rtrayclothing.com. Once again, the official and only place you can get any partners merchandise from. Believe it. Check us out. Check us out. Save some money. Use the use the promo code, man. Pod Squad A three all caps. Thank if you're you. not listening, you're not gonna put all caps if you're not listening. But if you're listening, you're gonna put all caps. And you can go to rtrayclothing.com, select a few items. At the bottom, they're gonna be like promo code, you're gonna put pod squad eight three all caps, and you're gonna pay for it, and you're gonna get in like two weeks and be like, boom, I'm good. Unless you need rush delivery, then you're gonna pay for that rush shipping and then you're gonna get it quicker. But, hey, com, And then you want to send us a picture of you in your AC83 or partners gear so that we can see and show the Pod Squad Nation as it grows. Yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Let us post you later. Let us go ahead and get those pictures so we can put you up on our social media pages, man. And let the world see it, man. Spread the word. Get that R trade out there. Get that Pod Squad out there, man. man. Let it help us grow. Get it. Get it today. And after you got it and you want to just, you know, let me holler at the fellas, man. I done listened to the pod squad, to the podcast. I done, I done went ahead and picked up my partner's merch on my AC83 gear. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying to shoot the shit with the partners, you know, talk, talk, talk that shit with them, you know, add in my little commentary, whatever the case may be, man. Pat, how they going to get in touch with us, man? At T H E P O D N A S, that is the Twitter, that is the Instagram, that's the TikTok, that's the Twitch. Am I missing the social media? I feel like I am. But if I haven't said it, it's the Instagram. I think I did say that. And the Facebook is Tiz Face Pat, are the partners. Uh, and you can message us there if you want to go ahead. If you have any ideas, any topics y'all want us to talk about, any. Uh, videos you want us to like react to, whatever, send us there. Indeed, indeed. And then, you know, after you've already contacted us, you know, you got your merch, you contacted us. And then you're like, you know what? The pod squash is pretty cool. I want to hang around. First thing I want you to do is go to YouTube. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe on all the videos. Second thing I want you to do is make sure that every week you listen to the podcast on anchor.fm backslash the hyphen partners or listen to us on Spotify. Those are the two best places that you can listen, if you can, because on there you can actually join the conversation. You can exclusively leave us voice messages that we can actually add to the podcast. So when you thought about, man, them dudes was tripping at this time because they were saying this, and I believe this. Well, go ahead. Leave us that message. Let us hear from you. Join our conversation weekly. Make sure you go to Anchor dot fm backslash the hyphen partners or spotify just type in the partners in the search and we pop right up um also make sure you become a member man you know after you done subscribed on youtube go ahead and support the boys man if you want to just send us a donation you can do that at dollar sign partner tiers one on cash app dollar sign partner tiers one 
or you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners where you can always donate for as little as a dollar or you can actually become a member which grants you exclusive rights to really cool membership perks and access that nobody else has but you. Um, and then also, if you want to support financially even more, just go ahead. Oh, no, I think that might be it. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead and support your boys, man. You like the podcast, you want to see us continue to grow, go ahead and hit that. And if you can't remember nothing that any three of us just said, save yourself some time. Just type in thepartners.com on any web browser. And you will find everything that we just said in one place for you. You can go ahead and scroll through the site and find all of the information that we just ran through. And with that being said, we about to be about this bitch, y'all. It's been another great episode. Episode 65 in the books. Uh, we had to cut a segment tonight, um, but the top MCs will be back next week. Uh, we're going to make sure of that. And um, yeah, man. Sa- tune in next week again same partner's time same partner station we love y'all and as always I have been one third of the partners it's your boy Tiz and I'm along with uh, it's the pattern one my niggas I'm tired uh, and I'm along with <laughs> what's that man it's your boy face I'm in the place but I'm about to take my ass to bed you better believe that and we about to be about this thing. We about to come to bed. Good night, y'all. Y'all be good, motherfucker.